Welcome to Build. I'm Laura Haywood, and today I'm sitting down with celebrated actor, playwright, and director Ruben Santiago Hudson, who currently stars as band director Cecil Diamond on BET's hit drama The Quad. In addition to appearing in countless film and television roles, including ABC's Castle and Lackawanna Blues, which he also wrote, Ruben has been a fixture of the New York theater scene since his Broadway debut in 1992's Jelly's Last Jam. Ruben is the recipient of a Tony Award for performance performance in August Wilson's Seven Guitars, the Humanitas Award for Writing, and the NAACP Lifetime Achievement Theater Award. Last year as a director, Ruben brought August Wilson's Jitney to Broadway, which won the Tony Award for Best Revival of a Play. Now he makes his TV directorial debut on The Quad in an intense and timely episode titled, I Am Not Your Negro. Before we welcome Ruben to the stage, here's a clip from The Quad. What you asked for, Clive Taylor. Sit down. I cloned his phone. You cloned it. I mean, once I figured out he had the same provider, I created a firmware app. I went to see him so we'd be next to each other, both on the same tower. I called him, and once he answered, I intercepted his signal. There you go. What am I looking at? Right here. Mm -hmm. Every month, he charges hundreds of dollars of personal expenses to the university, and that's his university credit card. He's buying sex on Southwestern Delta's dime. It's disgusting, right? I don't know about disgusting. Embarrassing, maybe, but so what? That's all I could decode before I had to shut down my computer. <sighs> I don't want to embarrass Clive Taylor. I want to destroy him. I got it. Search and destroy. Destroy and destroy. <laughs> Ruben Santiago Hudson, you are a little too believable as that villain. Not a villain. Not, well, not I was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you about that, right? The the actor's trick to playing quote, the quote unquote bad guy is he never believes he's the bad guy, I, right? It, it's, he's not the bad guy. So tell me from from Doctor or from band director Diamond's perspective. Uh, what's Listen, going on? There's a real, I've never played a, played a villain in my life. You might like me or not like me. Mm -hmm. I may be firm. I may be harsh. I may be cruel at times. But I'm a human being. That, that's, what they magnify in that scene is my revenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but you go to another scene where I'm talking to my sister, and I'm like, in love with it. That's my sister. That's my family. So what I am as Cecil Diamond is the ba band director and a person that wields a lot of power at a university, at a historical black college college. And um, the band directors are the kings that walk that campus. Mm -hmm. So when somebody comes and threatens that power, you defend it. No one gives up power easy. So I have to fight for the power. Mm -hmm. This man almost killed me, who I'm trying to destroy right. and destroy. This is not somebody that, that beat me in a handball competition. This is a man that almost killed me. Right. And stole my music. I'm not the kind of person saying, no, yeah, search and, and, dis and destroy. And what good drama is that? So oh, well, in, of course. No, in the, in, in the, the amazing Anika Noni Rose comes in to usurp my power, and I am defending and holding on to it as good as I can. There is such a clear... Uh background to Dr. I keep wanting to call him Dr. Diamond, but he's not, he's not a doctor, right? He's Director Diamond. Right. Um, there's, to me, like, I don't know a lot about his, how he grew up and everything. I mean, we do meet the sister. We know there was some family controversy, but it's clear to me that you hold a multi-layered um, background for him. Do you, do you know specific details about? Yes, uh, he, was, he was a child prodigy musician mm -hmm. and got scholarships to all these schools. His father was very uh, abusive to the mother uh, and myself and my sister. Mm -hmm. When I got the scholarships I left and I got out of that abuse, they remained in the abuse mm -hmm. and, they, and my sister held that against me. You left to pursue your thing and left us in this hell. And so he has a certain amount of guilt about that. And so I'm looking forward to making up with my sister more, and we did right. uh, the uh, in the last one. season, mm -hmm. which was a, which one of the most emotional, touching scenes that I had played on that show yeah. or ever. And uh, uh, Jacqueline Fleming plays my sister, who's fabulous, out of New Orleans. 
bad girl. But you know, it's 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 that part of him that we need to explore more, and we will explore more. Uh, the human issues, the frailties, the vulnerabilities. What people latch on to is the power. They love to latch on to, oh, he's power, he's mean. Mm -hmm. But n no one reflects on the other part. You know? Well, I, I shouldn't have said, the villain should not have been the first word out of my the mouth. Villain. I just mean, I, you can capture such intensity in just a glance. I mean, look at that face. It's like a guy I don't want to rumble with. Well, they chose that. I, I gave them this too. <laughs> they like that, you know, they, and they will tell me, you know, everybody, li you know, they, they like that. I mean, people, people are attracted to people go see Richard III. Uh -huh. You know, people do watch Iago in, in the play Othello. I mean, these, these so-called villains are interesting characters. Uh, the Machiavellian kind of uh, uh, guys, the complexity of those kind of people. He's a very complex character, and I really, really enjoy what the writers are doing with him. I totally get that, and that's what I meant when I said villain. Oh, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I meant oh, I like it in the, in the Shakespearean sense. I'm certainly not one-dimensional. Okay, let's talk about this episode that you directed, which airs tomorrow night. Um, I don't want to give anything spoilery away, but I will say I got it, a look at the episode. I thought I was going to come in and talk to you about, like, you know... Uh, Diamond's relationship with Noni, who's, you know, his alto sax prodigy, who he's now, like, sort of, we saw, they're sort of, like, getting into this revenge plot, and we, that we were going to talk about the, sort of, the traditional TV show drama, but what I saw last night was an incredibly intense, emotional uh, reflection of what it is to be black in America today. Yes. And it reminded me so much of the work that you've done with August Wilson's plays, and you're career-long commitment to social justice. And um, I, I don't think it's too spoilery to say that um, the concept of police brutality is addressed significantly. And I'd like to hear you talk about how this script came into your hands as a director and the approach you took to it uh, in that context. Well, first of all, big ups to Randy Huggins, who wrote it, uh, mm -hmm. Gramlin University graduate, HBCU graduate, an amazing writer. And then I also have to, to give a lot of credit to Felicia D. Henderson, our showrunner and the creator of the show, who pushed and prodded the network to let me direct. Because if you don't have a reel, a directing reel, a film reel, it's very difficult for anybody to give you an opportunity. They want to see that you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can't tell people I can bake bread if they've never tasted any bread, or at least a cookie or cracker. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but what Felicia pushed is said, you know, his play just won a Tony, and the man's been directing for 35 years. Yeah. Do you really think he cannot direct? He's got 28 pilots under his belt, 50 guest stars, 40 films. Do you really think he... So they, she pushed, and, and she got one shot, and she um, thankfully, you know, put a lot of energy into getting me there. So that's how it happened. But then Randy and I, the writer, spent a lot of time... Uh, with the script and what was important and the courage that we needed and would have and do have in showing this because I'm I'm not picking any sides in this. Mm -hmm. Even when the gentleman who plays the police officer, I told him, I'm not, there's no villains, to go back to that word. Mm -hmm. I said, you're doing a job and if you feel something's wrong in that job but or somebody's threatening your power, you're gonna have to fight for your power. She's a powerful woman mm -hmm. and she will not be messed with and she lets him know from the beginning and I'm not, as you say, spoilery. I know. Uh, but she lets him know, don't, don't play with me, I'm the president of the university and he, I don't give a damn who you are. Mm -hmm. Do what I say do and things escalate very fast. Some there are bad cops and there are good cops. Mm -hmm. I was not playing, a, had him playing a bad cop. I've had two human beings in a situation who couldn't communicate the way they should have mm -hmm. and it became explosive. And that's what happens. But uh, that happens far too often. So, um, you know, I had to have a vision on what I wanted to see. And it was complicated, the vision, as you saw. And it was harsh. Mm -hmm. And I played it the way I know life is. Yeah. Complicated and harsh. Mm -hmm. it, like I said, it reminded me of, of how I got to know your work, which was through uh, your commitment to August Wilson's plays. And it made me wonder what August would think of this show. I would hope, because I don't know what August would think, and no one does, but I would hope he'd be proud of me. You knew, you knew him better than just about anyone. I knew him, uh, I knew him well, you know, as, as well as you could know. You know, I knew him August well. I'm sure other people did as well. Uh, I take pride in the fact that uh, uh, he, he wrote three roles for me and that I've directed or been involved in all of his plays and continue to have a love for that. But I would hope he would be proud that I did not hold back any punches, mm -hmm. that I put it out there the way it is. And... Um, 
Anika, her work in this particular episode is Emmy worthy, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, that whole cast, I'm sure you want to talk about it, but we'll, you know, I'm just, I'm proud to be a part of it, to, to work with the, the young actors. And uh, my, my frat bro up there from the show, uh, Iraj in the middle. Oh, yeah? Uh, the dean. No, we, I'm not really frat guy, but we play frat guy. Anyway, oh, we'll talk oh, about them. It. If you want to talk about them, we can talk about these incredible people. Sean over there. Uh, Jazz just studied with me here in a master workshop for a week. She came up from Atlanta. I think yesterday was her birthday, too. Yeah, Jazz. Yeah. Happy birthday, Jazz. Happy birthday, Jazz. You know, obviously, you got Peyton back there with his fist up. And that's Peyton. You know, he's on the, fr he's on the front line. Uh, I like Renee. that he's got that hoodie on in the, in the poster. There's a very, um, there's a, a moment. He's from dynamite. Michelle and Jake, uh, Zoe. I mean, it's just, it's a great company. You are, you are in good company there. I think I want to address the fact that how, how much I have gotten from this show. I think, you know, there's this, to me, sort of elephant in the room question of what is this white girl doing sitting here talking about black entertainment television? And, um, and I, I think that, I mean, that's important to me to address. And I think that um, I love this show for the same reasons that I fell so hard in love with Jitney. I mean, you know, I... I I can gush for hours. The only play I ever saw on Broadway twice in the same day. And th it's because there's this duality for me in seeing myself reflected back like any good theater, television, or art does. And also discovering the nuances of living life in black America that I didn't have access to and can only have access through through to through experience. And I'm so grateful for artists like you and like BET and like the producers that brought that bring August Wilson's works to Broadway for for exposing audiences like me to this to these lives. And also of course bringing them to the screen, the stage for young people of color who get to see themselves represented. Yeah, people have no excuse now. Uh of wanting to mingle, of wanting to know more, of being curious. We need to be more curious, and we need to be more open, and we need to be more loving. And we, we everybody preaches that, mm -hmm. you know. But it, it, there's nothing more interesting to me, as I travel around the world, than finding out, exploring, uh, and being exposed to other cultures. I, I, I love that. I love the language. I love the, the way people worship, the way they love, the the way they they cook, uh, the way they dress. It's just something that I think is tremendously intriguing. And the world is a big place, and we have to be much more open to it. We need to start right here at home on this soil. Yeah, agreed. Um, I was reading back through some old old articles and interviews that you gave uh -oh. during your original, like your first few years on, in the New York theater scene. And uh, there was an article in the Times from 1996, shortly after you won your Tony Award. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, where you talked about when you first moved here, um, you were using the last name Santiago, and you were turned away from a Puerto Rican theater company because you didn't speak Spanish, and then you were turned away from an African-American theater company because you were Puerto Rican. Um, so so the, I'd love to have you talk about how overcoming those obstacles made you a stronger person, a stronger performer, and a better member of the theatrical community. Well, uh, I was just looking for a place to belong. I really wanted to find a place where I could be an artist and people would, would understand me and get me. So my name is, my birth name is Ruben Santiago. Ruben Santiago Jr., because my father is Ruben Santiago Sr. Mm -hmm. when he was here, and then I have a son named Ruben Santiago as well. So Did that's you, the name that, that I That same with. article says his name is Ruben 3D. Well, no, it's Ruben <laughs> Santiago the <III>. third. <laughs> Got it. 3D, it's I, wrong. Think, I think that just no, might be no. how the Times stylized it when he wrote a lot of time, the third, but it read like Ruben 3D, and I was like, did he name his kid Ruben 3D? Well, no, when we didn't get, no. <laughs> the third, No, I don't Got name it. kids, stuff, candy bar wrappers and stuff like that. I was like going to no. say. He, uh, <laughs> we, we, you know, we're, I'm very proud of that name because I'm very proud of my father mm -hmm. in my, in my Boricua heritage, mm -hmm. my Puerto Rican heritage. I'm very proud of it, as equally as I am of my African-American her heritage. I just was raised by a, a black woman, mm -hmm. so more of the way that I come off, you think I'm just, oh, it's just a black guy. No, I'm Puerto Rican too. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell the world and I'll celebrate it. Um, so I went to the places I thought that would take me, but they had their own ideas of what they thought a Puerto Rican should be or a black person should be. And I had to break down those walls. But that's all I've ever known this fight. I was born in a rooming house. <laughs> I was born on the floor. Mm -hmm. So all I know is to get up. Get up and keep, you know. So that was that was no problem. I mean, I, I praise the work that they do uh, at, at the Latino theater companies, and I praise the work they do in African American theaters. Mm -hmm. And I and that didn't make me say, well, I'm only going to go to the white theater. No, no, I kept coming back, mm -hmm. and I'm and I'm totally involved in those theaters now. So, 
it was just an it was just an obstacle at the time. Uh, and my mother said to me, my godmother, who I called my mother as well. You know, she said, you should put Hudson on your name. I said, my name is Ruben Santiago. That's my father. She said, boy, don't be stupid. Just put the, put it on there and see what happens. <laughs> Let people know that you got all those things. Uh -huh. I said, I'll try it. I tried it. And next thing you know, I was in Soldiers Play at the Negro Ensemble Company. You know, so I was like, whoa. So I said, I'm going to throw Hudson off, you know, and I tried to throw it off. And they'd call my agent and say, we, we're looking for Ruben Hudson. They say, no, we'll, we'll send him. And I come in as Santiago. They said, no, no, no. Is Hudson here? I'm, that, that's me. No, 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 you Santiago. Mm. So I had to keep both names. And, and at this point in my life, I'm very proud to have Hudson and Santiago on my name because I'm both of those, those people. Yeah. I'm, I'm one person, but I'm both of those right, of course. families. Yeah. You know, Puerto Ricans, they have like 10 names. Like my, my whole name would be Ruben De La Cruz Margucci Castro Santiago Jr. So why not just be Ruben Santiago Hudson? <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, do you have a music background like your character does? I'm a harmonica player. Yeah? You know, Self-taught. Oh my you know, gosh, I blues. so wish you had a harmonica in your pocket now, right you now. Should, hey, all you got to do is hit me with a rope, put, put your whistle in your pocket. I usually have my whistle with me. Oh, but I you don't, don't I today. I didn't, because I didn't think, I, I, thought, I thought I had a way home today. When I don't know if I'm, I'm going to get home, sometimes you got to drop the hat and geek, 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 geek. You know, <laughs> really? So, uh, Wait, hold on. Do you actually do that? What? Put a hat down and no, play just, the harmonica? That's a joke. Back in 1983, well, I didn't know how to play then because I learned how to play uh, in seven guitars. Uh -huh. August Wilson seven guitars to play Kangwa. In your Tony winning, Tony award winning role. Yes, just it was a, it was just a great great company and it, it, all of us were worthy of, to win it. I was just blessed to get it that that night. Mm -hmm. You know. So this guy, director Diamond, Cecil Diamond, plays all the all the instruments, but especially the alto. There's something that I brought to it. I said, anytime you come into my office, I should have a different instrument. Uh huh. That says who he is. And, and actors have the opportunity, if you're really thinking about your character, long as it's storytelling that, that's in this, what the writers have given you, you can't go against that or go away from it. Inside it, she says in the first, uh, uh, Zoe's character, Noni says in the first scene, you know, I know you, you play all these instruments and blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. So I heard that, that the writer wrote that. So when, it, when, you know, when the director says, okay, let's rehearse this, I always, I'll pick up a trumpet or I'll stand by the piano, or I'll pick up the flute, or I'll mm -hmm. pick up the sax. And when somebody comes, you never see me playing it because I can't play them. <laughs> but you know, somebody comes, right when I'm getting ready to play, somebody will come in. They say, oh, he plays all. So now the audience just takes for granted that, that I play everything. But you know how to hold them. I mean, I saw how you're holding the flute. Oh, I got, I got, I got the people with yeah, me. Yeah, there's, there's an instrument uh, consultant on the set. Oh, more than one. Really? We got some bad, let me tell you something. This show has everything it needs to be tremendously successful. Everything behind the camera and in front of the camera. There's no reason in the world that this show should not be a great hit. Nothing like it on television. It's Nothing. fantastic. I have a 110-piece marching band. And the music is really good. Like, I want to know if the quad's going to put out a soundtrack Let of me tell you these something. marching band songs. Well, maybe I'm not supposed to say it, but there is a single that Felicia D. Henderson did with some of the folks uh, featuring a Peyton uh, oh, that she's you, working on. She's working on right now, trying to get it out, and it's amazing. It's amazing. But I, it's, it's a football team on it. We do exteriors. We don't only do interiors where we in the three, four walls. We go outside and have a football game. Turn around the next episode, we'll be in a, in a marching band competition. I have 110 pieces. Somebody else will have 90 pieces. No show does that. And you're actually filming on an HBCU campus, right? Yes, it's Clark Atlanta, Morehouse, Spelman, Morris Brown. And, that's, and that, the feeling of that, mm -hmm. the spirits that, 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 that protect you in, in, on that sacred ground is palpable. You can feel it. Right. You can feel it. One of the through lines in the, the series right now is the idea that this independent, historically black college is in financial dire straits and is considering um, moving or being acquired by the Georgia State University system um, and what that means in terms of the history of historically black institutions. And that's just yet another way that I feel so grateful to have learned about these incredible institutions of, there, of the American education system. There's nothing on this show that it does not come from a reality. Mm -hmm. That is a reality. Historical black colleges are in need of more financing from, from, from alum as alumni as well as the, as the, our, the people we pay our taxes to. Mm -hmm. you know, and once we get incorporated into white America, what's the price, the cultural price that we have to pay? Mm -hmm. So do we, we have to give up something? 
And what we're, what we're fighting for with Anika's character, you know, uh, Eva Fletcher, is to make sure that the culture stays intact because that's the only way we're gonna know who we are when we delve into the culture. And absolutely, uh, uh, um, you sacrifice a part of that when you get swallowed by something else that that isn't important to, an entity that that isn't important to. That's a real story. Whether we're dealing with hazing or whether we're dealing with rape or, or college rape or whether we're dealing with uh, sexual improprieties or whether, whether we're dealing with uh, whatever we deal with, it's a part of the microcosm of life. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing, somebody scratches their head and say, what can I imagine? No, there's nothing on this show that's not a reality that we deal with. I think it's important to also say there's a lot of humor in this show. Yeah, we um, Yeah, there's a lot, there are a lot of laughs. It is not, as, as serious as these issues are, and they're handled with, like they're not handled with kid gloves. They're like really dived into, but there's also, you know, it's also got college TV show stuff. You know, there's, there's, Hookups. Hookups and breakups and, you know, like... Parties. And, and, and tests <laughs> and, you know, like Jasmine Guy has this great... Love Jasmine. Uh, this great supporting role who, and she just always makes me laugh. And um, so I think I don't want to accidentally make people feel like they're sitting down for something with like oh, all I, this no. gravity all the time. No, 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 it's, no, no. It's, it's a point in the television. I, I've, I've really fallen in love with it. When Jasmine and Iraj and I have a scene, the seniors, we like, we, we like the older people on the show. It is so, just trying to keep a straight face because we always click off each other so fast because they, they come in, Iraj is the guy in the middle there, play, the, he plays Petaway. Uh, sometimes Levine. we do this funny thing if you watch the show where a lot of times something will happen that these two characters like and they look at each other. We never look at each other. We always look someplace <laughs> else and it cracks us both up. Like, when, you know, if, 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 if someone says, well, you know, we're going to get Eva Fletcher because Eva's trying to reel both of us in. And instead of us saying, are we going to get her? Like, I'll look out the window and he'll look like down at the floor. <laughs> And after they say cut, we just fall out. And Jasmine, too. Sometimes she say, you guys stop. Because instead of looking at him, maybe I'll touch his shoulder. Like, she'll say, I'm going to be with you guys. And I just, like, touch his shoulder. And he'll, like, look out the window. And then I'll, I'll look down at my shoes. <laughs> it's like, and after it's over with, we fall out. Mm -hmm. you know? Sounds like you're having a good time. I'm having a great time. This, this is, one thing about this show is, is, is I've never felt more appreciated. Well, in that's my career. great. I, I really feel that they appreciate me, uh -huh. you know, and for an artist, any artist, the selfish individual aspect that you personally have been appreciated or noticed or felt like you're important, it, it, you know, not self-adulation or ego, but it matters. It makes you dig in even harder. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they have been very good to me. Um. Is there more TV directing in your future? Absolutely. I, I, got, I got bit. I got bit. You know, walking on to at 5.30 in the morning, and there's 120 people there waiting for you to say, what are our marching orders? You better be ready. And me, I'm anal and meticulous, and I come ready. Uh -huh. you know, we're going to shoot this. Then we got to move that garbage can over there. That's not sexy. Come over here. Bam. I want to hit that. Bring it down from the top here. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like. It sounds like, like Cecil Diamond's marching band. Yeah, but also, even when you see my theater, I direct cinematically, and I didn't even know it. I, 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 my, my dissolves, my edits, the way I go into things, come out of things, it's, it's continually linked like a television show mm -hmm. is. The only thing, I don't have any commercials in the theater. Yeah. Got, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's paying the bills. But um, I direct that way, and I never realized. Yeah. But till I sit back sometime and look at the plays, I direct say, that was very theatrical. Yeah. You know, I mean, like cinematic. Cinematic, yeah. yeah. There, are, there, was, there is one very, very extreme close-up in this episode that's coming up. And I was like, oh, he can't do that in the theater. The extreme close-up is one thing you can't do in theater. Is it and Anika's? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's... Yeah, near the beginning of the episode. You guys will see. Tomorrow night at 10 p.m. on BET. And don't miss this now. Y'all got to support the man. You, you know, so, so if, if nobody watches, nobody's going to let me direct again. You know? <laughs> so. Let's take a couple of questions from the audience. Please. Good morning, Ruben. My name is Nadej. Um, 
I noticed that you use um, similar actors throughout the years as um, Lloyd Richards did with Viola Davis and Charles Dutton. What's it like using uh, Rosalind Ruff or uh, Brendan Durden throughout the years? What's that process like in continuing that throughout the years? Well, I know when I have people like that or Stephen McKinley Henderson with me or uh, a host of other wonderful actors, I have a foundation set and they're an example for the other actors also. Uh, they watch them, they know they're safe, they know they're comfortable. They get me the way that I speak to them, real shorthand, like I can say to Brandon, you know better than that. that you know, as a director, I sit there and I say, hey, hey, you know better than that, and he'll just start laughing because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. If he does something cute to try to get your attention or to try to win, and I say, don't win that way. You know, I feel comfortable with, with those actors, and also I feel I owe them for the hard work they've done for me and with me. When you asked that question, did you know that Brandon makes a guest appearance on tomorrow night's episode of The Quad? I did, and I recently saw Jitney at the Lincoln Center Theater, and it was so great that I just... And I remember um, my freshman year in college, I saw a piano lesson with Brendan Durden and his brother and Rosalind Ruff, and I just noticed he was in this production and the regional production, and I'm like, these are characters or actors that come up usually, and I just wanted to know what's that like. That they, they, I call that my team. That's my... Gotcha. you know. And, but they've all branched out. Roz is doing a great play now. Now here, uh, Brandon is doing his thing. He's on The Americans, and his brother Jason is on Greenleaf. So it's hard for me to get my actors sometimes. But you so got one. You it, got him. It creates opportunities for other people to come into the fold. But I always have a little small foundation of, of, of my horses, I call them. You know, the guys I know win the race. Any of these folks, uh, since the show started filming, joined Team Well, yeah, I just had Jasmine here for a week. She flew up and spent a week here in the master workshop with me. So, uh, um... I, I hope to work with all of them. I already promised Iraj, my boy Iraj, that he's, he has to come do some August Wilson with me. And he's, a, he, matter of fact, Iraj is doing an August Wilson play right now in Atlanta. Oh, yeah? Right Which now. One? He is doing King Hedley II. You know, and the whole, the whole team, you know, obviously Anika is, is, is a theater person, but uh, I, I like to work with them more. Sean and I have become very close as well, who plays the coach. So anyway, I want to answer some more questions. Um, just while we're on the August Wilson thing, yes. is Jitney coming back? We're working on the national tour now. Okay. I fought hard to get it back on Broadway after yeah. a tremendously successful run. And uh, I didn't get, no one opened the door for me to do that. And, and I'll leave it at that. I was very disappointed that to have a huge hit like that, they'd rather have empty theaters than to have me in them. Mm. And so, and a lot of things, the logistics and, and how long I wanted, I needed to make my money. I needed a certain amount of time to get my producers their money back. And that availability wasn't there. And nobody fought hard enough to help me make that av availability there. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to bring it back. I look forward to bringing it back. And if the producers are listening, we want Jenny back on Broadway. So national tour first, first, then return to Broadway. Got it. Who else has a question? Hi. Um, so now that you've got to dip your toe into... Uh, directing for television, uh, do you see it being easier being able to do that as well as, you know, like being able to create a play? No, I don't see it easier. Easier is not a good word, not a good operative for me here. Uh, everything, is a, everything is a battle. Everything is a fight. Well, what I do understand is my worth. I do understand the quality of the work that I will, uh, the projects that I can give you. And I just go in and pitch and try to do the best I can with what I have. My next, the only thing I haven't done now that I want to do in this career as I'm getting up there now is direct film. So I have a couple films now that I've written uh, that's getting a lot of attention. And uh, I, I say within the next two years, I'll direct my first major feature film. That sounds exciting. But I need to do some more television before that. I got to get my, you know, I, I, the thing about this thing uh, that I do is I'm curious and I'm always learning. And the bottom line is I know this much. To a lot of people that don't have what I have, I know a lot. But in reality, I know this much. So I'm constantly trying to find out and learn that much. So I'm curious each day that I go out to try to be better and learn more. Inspiring. We have time for one more. Hi. Um, the same companies that turned you down when you were Santiago before adding Hudson, whatever happened with that? Did they ever come back and ask you to play with them? And did you yes. have like an aha moment? Can you describe that? Well, one of the companies that turned me down, uh, I went on to do a national tour with them. Uh, and then I, I came back and did my first off-Broadway show with that same company. The other companies has offered me many times to come back. At this point, I just, I have very little time. I plan my schedule two to three years down, so I try to book myself so I'm not sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. So in order to get me, you have to take me from something and have a better plan than my plan. So I would love to, to do more uh, work in, in the uh, Puerto Rican theater. 
Um, but I have done and directed Kiara Who This, uh, the happiest song plays last. So that was my moment to really be Boricua, celebrate and listen to Hibaro music and Ramito and, and just meet Kiara and I going back and have pasteles and pernil and just have fun. You know, so uh, drink a little coquito, but uh, uh, we had a good time. So I, I love both of my cultures. And, and at this point in my career, it's not hard for somebody to bring me in. When you don't have nothing, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to get in the door. But now that I do have some, some recognition, it's much easier. But I have no grudges. I understand, <laughs> I fully understand. I might not have been ready. Mm. But what I do know is that I have the promise of doing a lot of things in the future with both, both companies and both cultures. I can't wait to see what you do next. And in the meantime, we have tomorrow night to look forward to and hopefully plenty of other episodes of The Quad that you direct. Um, I know I will be watching every episode. I love this show. I love your performance. I was so moved by the episode that you directed, which everyone's going to get to see Tuesday night at 10 on VET. VET yes. um, thank you so much for being here, Thank Ruben. you. Thank you all. <laughs>